Hi everyone, in this video we're going to talk about how to use the AWS rec recognition application within R to build your own face and emotion detection for images on your own computer. So we can learn how to take images from your own computer, learn how to train those images so that our, API, our AWS API learns who's in those images as well as what are the emotions attached to those specific images and then be able to label new images that our API our model has not seen before. So to start off, let me go ahead and pull up AWS recognition in the AP AWS console. This is what it looks like. There's a lot of things that you can do within Amazon recognition. One specific thing is facial analysis. If you wanna play around with this on your own, you can go ahead and upload your own image or paste in an image URL. And the output is that we get a face detection for our specific image as well as attributes tied to that image. So we see the age range, we see smiling, appears to be happy, etc. So there's a lot of attributes now that we can output from our API for that specific image. So going back into R, for this specific project, I'm gonna use the pause package. Pause is a library that allows us to connect to AWS. There's a lot of things that you can do in pause. The documentation is really good if you go to the pause GitHub site. Second, we're gonna be using the magic library for image functions, and then finally tidyverse for doing some data manipulation. So before we start, we need to get an AWS access key and, ex and secret access key. The way that we can do that is within AWS, we can go to our dropdown for my security credentials. This will take you to your IAM page. Within IAM, there's a dropdown for access keys. You can go ahead and click on access keys and that will allow you to either generate a new access key or uh, be able to visually see what your access key that you currently have already is. So once you have that information, um, you're gonna need to put in your access key and your secret access key here. We're going to call our recognition function from pause into a variable called SVC. This is to initialize our AWS recognition API. Next, we need to create a collection into our Amazon Web Services application for where our information is going to be stored. So in this case, our collection ID is going to be called photos-r. This can be called anything that you want. And I'm using the create collections function to do that. So if you wanna look at all the functions on your own, you can go to the recognition documentation in the API references within actions. We see all of the different types of actions that you can do for this specific API. One of which is to create a collection. Creating a collection is a way to add faces to the collection using the index faces operation. So this basically indexes now all the images and stores that information in AWS. Okay, so we've created our collection. Now we need to train some images to learn who's in those images as well as be able to um, eventually get some information out of those images, for example, emotions tied to a specific image. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the images out of my directory. I'll show you what this looks like on my, on my computer. I have a folder, a, lot, a folder in desktop face detection slash photos. What this looks like is each person has images of that specific person tied to them. So I have a folder called Danny with images only of Danny. I have a folder called Drew with only images of Drew, a folder of Natalie with only images of Natalie. And this is a way for me to train what it means to be Danny, what it means to be Drew, or what it means to be Natalie. So next my for loop is gonna loop through each one of those files, pick out the information, and tie the file name to that specific image. So I've already went ahead and ran this. You can go ahead and do this on your own. It might take about a minute or two. All of the code, by the way, is linked at the bottom and can be found on my GitHub site. What this is doing is grabbing the image file path, the image file name. The image file name in this case is going to be the name of the folder. And that way I could tie the name, Natalie, to any images that Natalie appears in. 
And then finally, I add the photos and the name to the AWS collection. So in order to do that, we go ahead and use the index faces function. We specify what our collection ID is. That's the collection that I created above. Our image is the image in our file path, each one of those images. Our image name, again, is the folder name. In this case, the folder name is the person's name themselves. And then we want to detect all of the attributes tied to that image. So when we go ahead and run that, we get some information back. And now this has indexed all of our images into our collection ID, photos-r. All right, so now we've stored information about our images in AWS but we need to be able to pull in new images now and use our model that we trained to detect who is in a new image. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a new photo on my computer now, and this new photo is in my file path desktop slash face detection slash image one. So this is an unseen image that my computer has not seen before. It contains Natalie and Danny, who I have previously trained to learn who those people are. So this is only going to work if the new photo contains images of people that have previously been trained in tier model before. So my file name is, in this case, is just the name of my file. I use this later on down the road for outputting this information back into a data frame. I can use the read photo, uh, sorry, image underscore read function using magic, and this grabs my image. I could get some information about my image. And then I could detect faces in the image and pull all the attributes associated with that face. So this is going to use the detect underscore faces function from AWS API to take my new photo and collect all of the attributes associated with that image. So I've already gone ahead and ran this. It might take a little bit of time to run that on your own. But if we go ahead and look at our next line that grabs the face details, from that information, we could see now that we're getting all of the actual details that Amazon has associated to the faces in my image. So in this case, my length is two because I have two images that were in my new image and we have all of the attributes tied to that new image. So there we have it. We've already gone ahead and ran our face detection on a new image. It doesn't really do us any good though in this type of format. So what I'm going to do is run a for loop to take this information and spit it back out onto the actual image itself, as well as to put this information into a data frame. So first of all, I'm just gonna initialize a new image by taking a duplicate of my original image, and this is because I'm going to now draw on this new image what the output of the attributes actually are, as well as a boundary box of my face detection. So what this is doing is for each face and all faces, so remember all faces comes from above and it's basically the details associated with each face in my new image. I'm taking for emotion in my face dollar emotion. So if we go ahead and look at face dollar emotions, and this will run because I've already ran my for loop previously, we get each emotion tied to that specific face. So we see happy 99.6% confidence, surprised 0.06% confidence. So what I'm doing here is basically just putting it into one string and this string is gonna be output back onto my image over the face to actually label who the person is as well as the emotions tied to that specific face. So there's other things that we can grab outside of only emotions. If you wanna take the age, you can get the the low and high age estimate. I've in, the, in my case, I created an age estimate that takes the low age plus the high age divided by two. And then finally, I append all of this information together using R bind, and we get one final string. This time, we have the age estimate attached to our string. Again, all of this information is going to be output back onto our image. So the next couple lines, I'm gonna go through pretty quickly. It's really just drawing information onto our image now. I've grabbed from my face, I'm grabbing the bounding box. So this is gonna give us the width, the height, the leftmost point, and the topmost point of a bounding box around the face. And this way I could actually draw a bounding box on that face. As well as also search my faces uh, with the image 
So within my photos R, I'm gonna take that image and I wanna do a face match with a 70% threshold. So that's gonna specify the person associated in the image. And then I'm also gonna do that as well to grab the, ex the um, actual motions tied to that image as well. So again, going through this a little bit quickly, the code is all below and is linked to my GitHub site so you can walk through all of this code step by step as well. So next I create a graphics device version of the larger photo that we can annotate. If the face matches something in the collection, then we add the name to the image as well as actually annotate the emotional information associated with that image. So I'll show you what that looks like in just a bit. Finally, these last few steps I'm gonna skip over for the time being, but what this is doing is taking that emotion and age information, R binding them all into a data frame, or sorry, C binding them into a data frame, and um, creating an output data frame for each person, what were the attributes tied to that specific person. So I'll show you what that data frame looks like. I have to rerun everything. Just take a couple seconds. We can see on the bottom here on the console that we've detected Danny. We now detected Natalie in our photo. And the output of our data frame now is our face name, which theoretically is just an ID. Natalie in image one, and we have all the attributes associated with Natalie for image one, as well as with Danny for image one. So we run this now on multiple images. We can R bind all of that information together to create one uh, massive data frame. So now we could go ahead and look what our final annotated image looks like. We could write that image back out to our data frame. And when we go ahead and look at that, I write that out to a folder called annotated. We could see that in this case, we get an annotated image of Natalie and Danny. So we can see that our Image has detected Natalie on the left-hand side. It's detected Danny. We have the red boundary box that we drew around our face. Remember, we grabbed that from our, um, our face bounding box came from right here. So we're just drawing uh, all of those connecting points together. And then we also took those emotional attributes tied to Natalie and tied to Danny and drew them onto our face. So we could see for Danny, he is smiling, I am smiling, and there's a happy is 99.89% confidence. For Natalie, she's also smiling in this picture, happy has a 99.65% confidence. So the image correctly in this case classified us as being happy based on the attributes tied to our face, in this case because we were smiling in the photo. So there you have it, a lot of cool things that you could do with AWS Recognition API in R. There's a lot more that we could do just besides face and emotion detection. If you have other ideas for things that you could do, please leave those in the comments. I'd love to see some other things that you can do with this information. And I'd also appreciate if you can subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos to come. Thanks a lot for your time.